What's up everyone? I'm Matt with Ozark Overland Adventures and today I'm taking a look at this behemoth of a power station solar generator right here. It's the Blue Eddy AC200P and this thing pops a whopping 2,000 watt hour battery in it. It's got a 2,000 watt pure sine wave inverter that can peak at 2,500 watts. It has a total of 17 outputs massive input capability and as you can see compared to its little brother the new EB70 it's huge. Ozark Overland Adventures is proudly supported by the Moore Expo, the Midwest's only indoor event for adventure travel enthusiasts. Artemis Overland Hardware, they have the passion and knowledge to ensure that your next outdoor experience is more than a camping trip, it's an adventure. And the Big Iron Overland Rally, a three-day weekend camp out and concert experience at the Big Brutus Historic Landmark. So in looking at power stations, you've got to evaluate what are my power needs based on how much space I've got, how long am I going to need it, and those answers will help you determine do I just need like a little 300 watt one to keep a phone charged at night? while I'm out camping? Do I need something more like this to keep a fridge running for a couple days while I'm out overlanding or you know, car camping trip, that sort of thing? Or do I need something like this to really give me some serious, maybe off-grid power or home emergency preparedness type situations? And I see this having two use cases. One, Home emergency preparedness, I think, is the obvious one. I think that is the biggest reason to have something like this in your house ready to go. And the other thing is, if you plan on spending some serious time off grid and need to really power a lot of things, keep a lot of things recharged, power a fridge, maybe run a small RV, um, off the grid, that sort of thing. It's going to be pretty weather. You've got solar options to keep this thing charged. I think that's where this thing comes into play as far as it use for, for overlanding type of situation. You know, if you're going to be off the grid for a week or more and, you know, needs something of this capacity to just power your camp, that sort of thing. And in both situations, it will do a fantastic job. Now, stick around to the end of this video because the EB70 has been my go-to since I got it. If I'm going on any type of overlanding camping trip, this is the one I grab out of my closet and I've got a lot of power stations, but this is my go-to. And in partnership with Blue Eddy, we are going to give one of these away in a week. So details for that, at the end of the video, but we're giving one of these away to, to one of you. So let's run through the specs of this big boy real quick. 2000 watt hour battery, 2000 watt pure sine inverter with 2500 watts peak. It's got a total of 17 outputs. It's got six AC ports. It's got five three amp USB A ports. It's got one PD 60 watt USB-C port, which would be great for you know keeping your laptop charged, that sort of thing. It's got two of the little five millimeter DC output ports. It's got one cigarette lighter, 12 volt output. And then it's got this port over here, which uses an aviation plug to connect to an XT60 adapter that you can then run other things on. It's rated at 25 amps, so you can get a lot of power out of that if you have something to use it for. It's also got two 15 watt wireless charging pads up on top, so you can drop two cell phones up on here that have wireless charging capabilities and keep them charged just by placing them up here. Now realistically for me, it's got 14 outputs, which is still phenomenal. And I don't really have any use for the aviation plug output or the little two DC um, five millimeter outputs there. I, I don't have anything that uses those. I don't personally know what would use them except for maybe a CPAP machine. Um, but so 
out of 17, three of these aren't really usable for, for my purposes. So but I've still got 14 outputs, six ACs. I honestly do wish it had more USB ports, especially USB-C. The fact that it only comes with one, the fact that it's a 60 watt, not a 100 watt, like the EB70 has a 100 watt. I think Blue Eddy could have stepped it up there. I don't think anyone could say that you'd be lacking being able to plug all of your things in this at once. So let's talk about the inputs. It's got your standard eight millimeter input that you plug your wall adapter in. And this thing comes with a massive 500 watt power supply. On power supply alone, this thing can recharge in about four, four and a half hours, which is pretty incredible for a power station this massive. Down here, it's got an adapter for an aviation plug and in your handy dandy little bag here, which I am grateful that Blue Eddie finally included the little bag, you get this adapter, which is the aviation plug to an XT90 adapter. And then you've got this one for your solar adapter with the MC4 plugs. And then you've got this one for your 12 volt because you can actually recharge this slowly in your vehicle. Now, when it comes to solar, this thing can input a massive 700 watts of solar input. And you can combine that if you are in the situation, you can combine 700 watts of solar with the power brick and run them both at the same time for 1300 watts of potential input and can recharge this thing in two hours. That's incredible. The fact that you can recharge a 2000 watt hour battery in two hours is phenomenal. Now, obviously that means getting the ideal solar input and maximizing that 700 watts, which isn't really realistic. But still, if you can just get 500 watts and 500 watts of this, you can recharge it in two and a half hours. I mean, that's, that's phenomenal. The AC200P is an update from their previous AC200. The AC200 had lithium ion batteries. This one, the P stands for phosphate because this one has lithium iron phosphate batteries in this that are rated at 3,500 cycles. That's the most cycles I have seen in any power station that I have reviewed. I thought the EB70 was fantastic at 2,500 cycles, but 3,500 cycles. Is this a big investment? Yes. Is this going to last you a long time? Yes. And that 3,500 cycles isn't to, to kill the battery. It's to 80% capacity. So even after 3,500 cycles, you've still got 1,600 watt hours of battery capacity left in this. So this thing will last you a very, very long time. So let's talk about the two main use cases for this in home emergency preparedness and then kind of ultimate overlanding power source. As far as the home preparedness goes, you know, if you've got a power outage and maybe you need to, something to run your fridge in so your food doesn't go bad. I plug this into my home fridge. It's an older model, so it's not super energy efficient. And it would spike when I first plugged it in up to about 1300 watts. But then as the compressor settled down, it would, you know, consistently as the compressor kicked in, run, pull about 250 to 300 watts. And that's gonna buy you a lot of time because the compressor is only kicking on when it needs to. And so it's not pulling that full time. Even if it was, you'd get, you know, what, 10 hours, eight, nine, 10 hours of constant runtime for your fridge. But realistically, you're gonna get 15, 16, maybe even 20 hours worth of runtime on a home fridge off of this. If it's sunny and you have the ability to recharge with solar, and you can make this last a long time. So what about running some of your home kitchen appliances in case of a power outage? Right now I've got the waffle maker on. Uh, you're gonna be making some Belgian waffles and toaster ovens on. You can be making toast. You can be making, you know, chicken pot pies, cinnamon rolls, all kinds of things in your toaster oven. And it's handling just fine. It did peak while this was heating up at over 2000 watts, but it's handling both of them just fine. There's not many power stations out there that can handle this. What if you want to make a nice, you know, pot roast at camp and want to take a pressure cooker along or 
I don't know, need to finish a roast if the power's out. Absolutely not a problem. Right now it's pulling just under a thousand watts with the pressure cooker. And what if we want to make margaritas to go with our dinner? Not a problem. About 1300 watts with both of them on. It can handle it. So what about your home microwave? Power goes out. Can it power this so you can reheat food or something? That's a big microwave, 1600 watts. But yeah, it can handle it. What if it's winter time and you have a power outage and the only option you have for heating the space that you're in is a little electric floor heater such as this one. I've been running this one on high for a few minutes now and it's doing quite well. On low this pulls about 600 to 700 watts. On high this will pull up to 1400 watts. So are you going to use this just running constantly? No, because you'll get you know, a little over an hour of runtime out of it. But cycling it on and off, running it on low, setting a cooler temperature, you could ride it out pretty well. Recharge this during the day, assuming there's sunshine. It could get you by. So, I mean, I've tested the Jackery 1000. I've tested the little brother disc, the EB150. And when it comes to home emergency, this is hands down the best option out there especially for the money so let's talk about the ultimate overlanding power supply situation now obviously you're not going to throw this in the back of your wrangler and or forerunner and you know take it on a weekend excursion this is just way too much i mean this thing does weigh 60 pounds and takes up a lot of room compared to the smaller ones but if you're going to be out living off the grid for extended periods of time and you've got the space to put this I think there's a very compelling case for this so that you're not having to worry about recharging things often. If it's cloudy, you don't have to worry about, oh no, I can't recharge my power station with solar and my fridge is going to die. So I think there is definitely a, an argument to be made that this is useful in the overlanding world if you're going out on extended periods of time. Now, I honestly did not mess with plugging in my fridge in this because I know that the EB70 and the EB150 can run my Dometic for four days, five days. So with this, you can easily get five, six, maybe even seven days worth of run time, depending on the environment you're in. Obviously more time if you're up in the mountains of Colorado and it's cold less time if you're in the Mojave Desert and it's 120 degrees. But you're gonna get the most runtime out of this. And if you're able to pair that up with solar, you're gonna be able to run a fridge indefinitely off this because the output from a fridge is just nowhere near the input capabilities of this. So, but just think about being able to set this down at camp, plug, you know, keep your fridge in, plug some you know, some small cooking appliances into it, a small blender, your, your, whatever you use to make coffee with, um, all of your lights, keeping all of your batteries to your cameras and your drone and your cell phones and all that sort of stuff charged. I mean, this can power your camp and not just your camp. It can probably power your neighbor's camp and their neighbor's camp um, if, if need be. And it does incredibly well. So what if you're like us and you have a small teardrop trailer with an AC, maybe a small RV, maybe something else, and you don't want to be stuck at home during the summertime because it's just so hot outside. Here in Arkansas, we have some brutal summers. It's currently mid-July. We've got high temps, high humidity, and nobody wants to be just camping in a, in a tent in this. That's miserable. You got the camper currently plugged in to the AC200P. Air conditioner is on and it feels great in here. Now it's currently pulling about 1200 watts. So is that going to last me all night? No, but it can get this cooled down before going to bed. 
I could cycle it on and off a few times during the night to keep us cool and it would work just fine. And now that the air conditioner has cycled off for a little bit, it's only pulling 120 watts. That'll work well. I need to get an inside air conditioned review space. Maybe I'll start doing them in here. Right now I've got the AC200P plugged into two 200 watt Blue Eddy solar panels. The conditions today are not ideal. I've got pretty thick clouds moving out. But right now, getting over 300 watts of input between these two panels, which is not bad. There's not a whole lot of things I'm gonna be running off of this that's gonna be pulling over 300 watts consistently. So running a fridge, you know, even your interior fridge, this will be able to keep up with the load. Now, if you're running really high wattage devices like a heater, um, you know, that's pulling in a lot more power than what it's gonna get from the solar panels, and obviously you're gonna have a deficit there, but this will buy you some time if needed. I wish I had a third 200 watt panel. Actually, I wish I had two more 200 watt panels to really test out that 700 watts of solar input, but I don't. This is the best I've got, but it's pretty awesome. There is one feature on this that I love and also hate for a very specific reason, and that's the display, which is not uncommon for me in Blue Eddy products to, to have mixed reviews about the display. But the display on this thing has so much information detailed info about the inputs and the outputs. But the downside is, to it is that if it's a bright and sunny day outside, you can't see it, which I think is a huge issue, not a deal breaker. You know, you can shield it and that sort of thing and you can, you can make it work. But if it's sunny, it is very difficult to see this display. And I think that's unfortunate. I think they could have done better just upping the brightness on the display would have been helpful um, but the amount of information you can get off the display is ridiculous well you can see even in my garage it's, there's a whole lot of glare and reflection but you've got your car and solar input here you've got your ac input here dc ac outputs you've got your on off i've got the ac on to turn the any of them on it does require two taps but you can't accidentally turn one on or off, which is fantastic, because if I'm gonna turn that off, then I have to tap it twice again. Uh, you go in your settings here, you can toggle uh, your AC output, your AC in your DC inputs. Eco mode, it does have an eco mode. Right now it's on, so it does help conserve that battery life. Um, you've got tons of data that you can dig into which I'm not even gonna get into because it's just so much. And then you've got fault codes. Um, you know, if you trip, if you plug in too much solar, if you trip the breaker uh, on something, you've got, you can figure out what's going on with it. And then it shows you, you know, 53% remaining, which is great. Now let's talk price, because as you can imagine, something of this power output does not come cheap. Um, the AC200P lists for $17.99 on their website, which by itself, not bad, way cheaper than the competition. However, we've got a little coupon code for you. It's in the, the link and the, the coupon code are in the description. It'll get you $150 off this, making this $1,649, which for this much capacity and this many outputs, this much solar charging ability, crazy crazy good deal comparing it to the competition i mean the jackery 2000 if you can find it in stock comes in at 2100 dollars goal zero didn't have anything in this category they have a 1500 watt that's also two thousand um, dollars and neither one of them have near the outputs that this thing has so you know compared to the competition i think this thing is a no-brainer and is really a fantastic choice for home emergency preparedness, the ultimate overlanding um, power station camp setup, um, you know, if you need that much, I, I think this is this hands down the best. 
Now, let's conclude this video talking about the giveaway for the EB70. Here's all you have to do. First of all, would like for you to be a subscriber. So if you're not a subscriber to the channel, click that subscribe button, hit that bell icon. I've got more reviews coming up. We've got some epic trips uh, that we've taken. Those videos are coming out from Moab. We've got a lot more planned for this year. Big changes coming to the channel soon um, that I am excited to tell you about. And don't want to miss that. So hit that subscribe button. Um, would also appreciate if you liked the video, you know, if, if, if you did. Um, but all you got to do is go to our Facebook page, Ozark Overland Adventures. There'll be a link down below. I'm going to have, there's a post on there about this giveaway. Just comment in the post. And one week from today, which is the date this video came out is Wednesday, July 14th. One week from that, so Wednesday, July 21st, I will be doing a random drawing from the people who commented on that Facebook post and I will notify you of who the winner is. I'll probably do it live over Facebook and do it that way. Um, but I would do it in the YouTube comments, but then there's no way for me to, to, to contact you other than just to put a comment under your comment and hope that you read that email notification. So we're gonna do it on Facebook. Um, and on our Facebook page, Ozark Overland Adventures, look for that giveaway um, graphic information on the Facebook page and just comment in it. And one week from the day that this was released on July 21st, 2021, we're going to give away an EB70 to one of you. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Blue Eddie, for um, letting me do this review, for uh, providing an EB70 for us to give away. And we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.